Okay, so fascia is a perfectly good medical term that has been uh, incorporated, neologized, um, brought into a different meaning. The medical meaning for fascia is certain sheets of biological fabric uh, inside the body. So we talk about plantar fascia and plantar fasciitis, it's actually the plantar aponeurosis. We talk about the thoracolumbar fascia, it's actually the thoracolumbar aponeurosis and other things. We needed a word that would describe the whole net. Your body is held together by a net. If you, you're 65% water, Depending on how fat you are, you're somewhere near 60, 65% water, and, and how old you are. Um, and why doesn't that water just end up as a puddle at your feet? You, you know, why don't you just have great big balloon legs? Because the fascia, because the biological fabric of the body, which is not dissimilar to the plastic in a plastic carrier bag that you bring your groceries home in, um, that that fascia organizes the water into cells, organizes the cells into groups of cells called fascicles because they're surrounded by fascia, and organizes that into a bag that you might call a muscle and organizes that inside a bag. It's bags within bags within bags within bags all the way down to the cellular level. You can just think of an orange. An orange is an easy way to think about that. Each drop of juice is contained within one of those little cells. Those cells are contained within the section. The section is contained within the rind of the whole orange. It's the same for a human being. You have small droplets of water, gel, but very watery gel, um, combined in a membrane, combined in a bigger membrane, combined in a bigger membrane, combined in the membrane of the whole body. So we really haven't had a word for that whole web work. We haven't had a word for that whole network. So fascia has been incorporated as a term for that whole webbing, the soft tissue webbing of the body. Now, in fact, that same kind of webbing goes right through your bones, and it goes right through all the cartilage that's at the end of the bones on your joints, and the cartilage that's right in here, and the cartilage that's in between your vertebrae and all of that. Um, that web work goes through all of it. It's very much like leather, like your belt, or your shoes, that kind of thing is the fascia inside a bone, but then the bone has been impregnated with calcium salts, so it has that solidity. So you can either pull on a bone or push on a bone, and it will resist either one of those forces. Tendons, if you push on it, it's going to collapse, but it's great for tension. So tendon, in the new use of the word fascia, tendon is part of the fascia, all of the fascia that goes around the muscles and within the muscles and through the muscles and around the organs and through the organs and in between everything, it's all this network. And the reason, the only reason that it's new, it's not a new tissue, you've been dealing with, if you're a trainer, you've been training fascia since you started training. If you're a body worker, you've been working with fascia since you put your hands on the body. You can't avoid it. It's right under the skin here. So you're gonna come in contact with it. The only thing that's new, what's new is we're considering it as a system. We've thought about the plantar fascia, we've thought about the Achilles tendon, you can think about the central tendon of the diaphragm, you can think about the nuchal ligament. All of these are simply zip codes, or postcodes for those of you outside the United States. These are areas, but they have no separation. It's really important that you understand this, the science is. The science is that there is no separation between these things. We have made the separation. We came along with a scalpel. We cut out the plantar fascia and said, see, plantar fascia. We cut out the biceps and said, see, it's a muscle called a biceps. But when in the action of cutting that muscle out, we cut it away from all the connections that it has. My work, the anatomy trains, is that the biceps has a connection up and down the arm. It goes up from there into the... Uh, pectoralis minor and down from there to the thumb. There are specific connections from the biceps, north and south. There are also connections from the biceps east and west. It connects to the brachialis. It connects even over the intermuscular septum into the triceps fascia. When you are doing your preacher curl, you may be training the muscle of the biceps, but you're training all kinds of fascia around it. You're training the, you're training the fascia that goes to the brachialis. You're even training the fascia of the triceps. I didn't say the muscle. You're training the fascia of the triceps when you're doing a preacher curl. When, um, and the ligaments, 
we've thought about the ligaments. Oh, nothing's happening with the ligaments, nothing's happening with the ligaments, nothing's happening with the ligaments. Bang, the ligaments come into being, come into use only when I get out to the end of the, of the motion, whatever that end of the motion is. First I hit the muscle, then I'm going to hit the ligaments. And if you put my arm behind my back and lifted it up like you were my older brother trying to get me to do something, that pushing the head of the humerus against the weak part of the ligamentous capsule in the shoulder will persuade you to do anything that your older brother says. So this whole set of stuff works together in movement and it also, this was the fundamental insight of Ida Rolfe, it deforms in response to your attitude. And I'm using the word attitude deliberately because I mean both the outer attitude, your posture, the way your body is in space, but the inner attitude as well. You don't see very many people going around going, I'm so depressed. If you're really going to be depressed and if you're really going to get any joy out of being depressed, you have to take the posture that goes with being depressed. Mm -hmm.